Hey, I know y'all be looking for that perfect way to cook your turkey this Thanksgiving. Well, folks, don't look no further than here because I'm firing up the smoker. I'm going to show you how to get the greatest flavor with some of that alder wood and mesquite mixed in. But we talking about a crispy skin turkey that is ooh, so juicy, it'll melt in your mouth with every bite. So gobble, gobble, gobble and come on with me. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the backyard on one of my most favorite holiday recipes. What are we talking about? Smoked turkey. And woo, we are getting ready to do the turkey trot and the turkey shuffle we are. But hey, we gotta get that turkey it's really, really tender. And I want some great flavor in there before we even get to that smoker. So what are we talking about? Hey, if you got the time, then we can brine. You like that rhyme, Shan? Whoa. Time, brine, and rhyme. Now that's busting it right out right there. We're just gonna tenderize this turkey and bring out some of that goodness in there. So, to brine or not to brine, that'd be the question that a lot of folks is asking me all the time they are. And folks, if you brine in a turkey, sure, you gotta have a little more time invested in it. I'm talking at least 12 hours needs to soak overnight, and it's gonna make things more tender it's going to decrease your cooking time because a brine turkey will cook faster than one that is not brine. Did you know that, Sean? That is a fun fact. Yes, and we got us a big old, probably five gallon pot right here, maybe seven. And I got water in it to about right there, which is about, Me again, right where? about right there, and the pot's hot. Oh. <laughs> it's what, you, what I would call a hot pot, gallon and a half of water. Now, a lot of folks just going to do this strictly with a water base only, but not the cowboy. He going to add some organic chicken broth. Uh-huh. What made it organic? I really don't know, but we're going to put some in there. We are. So two boxes of chicken broth. We're going to add some salt. Yes, we are. And we're going to let it just pour in there. People be asking, how much salt do you use, Cowboy Kent? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to use the right amount for this little basin thing here. Probably about two cups, pretty close to that. I'm going to put me about some brown sugar in there, about a half a cup, which is about that much of a handful. And I want you to go ahead and give that a stirring so we can make sure it's not just sitting right there on the bottom. It is what you call a garlic clove. And we're just going to mash them some more so they'll get in there in that chicken broth and make us some more flavor. Two lemons. So we're going to put two of them in there. You know what this is, Shen? This is what you call camouflage before you get ready when you're hunting the turkey. <laughs> it is some good rosemary. How many? Hey, I think there's four or five in there. Sage is so much flavor. See here? Some mustard seed. Mm-hmm. We're going to put some of that in there. It's a peppercorn melody. What song do they sing? I'm so hot. Yes, I am. That's the peppercorn melody. About that many, it is. And look here. Whoo, allspice berries. The bay leaves. Got to have some of them in there. And we're just going to let that come to a good simmer. Because when it gets to simmering, Ooh, I wish y'all could smell that right there. That's not only good for your sinuses, that'd be fine drinking right there. Let it cool plumb off. I'm talking cool. May take it 30, 45 minutes. Now, if you're really hurrying, okay, I'm gonna let you go ahead and put like two or three cup of ice in there. And you can see we done got the bird out. We got him off the roost tree, one out there right quick in the dark. Got one of them long hooks on a pole and just jerk him down there. That way you don't be bruising the meat. Now they'll flog you a little when they hit the ground, but you just give them to Shan. Don't give them to the bigger duke or you don't have nothing left. And I want you to make sure that you be getting the giblets, the heart, the liver, and you'll make sure you get it all out there and make sure there ain't no ice particles. The neck, and this turkey was thawed in the ice box, and you wanna make sure that is, don't just get them and just set them out on the counter and let them come to room temperature. And make sure you look in there, ain't nothing in there. I don't want you to leave nothing. Your wallet, your keys, cell phone, not a thing. And then I want you to take your bird and let's limber him up. Do some aerobics. <laughs> I mean, you got to make sure that your bird is in the mood to get in the pool. You don't want him to drown. Maybe he do a little breaststroke now and then. Here we go. All you gotta do now, folks, is put him in the pool. Just set him down in there gingerly. We're gonna put two sacks of ice in there cause I want him to get good and chilled. And we're not just gonna leave him sitting out here unless you live north up there somewhere and you know he ain't gonna just get too warm. But I'd rather you just put him in an ice box, ice chest, something like that, set him on a shelf, 
put them in there and you're good to go. It may not take two sacks, but we got two just in case. Them mussels that might have been sore that we didn't work all the soreness out of, this ice bath will get the rest of them. He'll be so tender when he come out of there. He got to sit in there 12 hours. We sure thank you for tuning in today. Mm. But I guess you're going to have to tune in next time for us to be smoking this turkey. Mm -hmm. So sorry. <laughs> Not you. Really, folks, we're going to set him in there and due to the magic of TV that Sham is filming there and YouTube, we'll get him out of there and y'all won't even know he took a bath and we'll put him on that pit barrel. We'll get things to going and we'll walk you through that tomorrow. Well, it didn't take long to spend the night, did it? But who, if you folks don't mind, would you sort of turn away because don't you don't want to see nobody getting out of the tub. So, who, and I'll tell you what, that turk is cold. Make sure you turn him up here and get all that ice water shook out of him. Now folks, this is about a 15 pound bird it is. And we're looking at cooking about 20 to 25 minutes a pound. So we're six and a half to seven hours in. But one thing you gotta always remember is when you take that turkey out of that brine solution, just like when you get out of the bathtub, we got to dry that turkey off. I wanna make sure that it is really dry inside and out. It is all dried off it here. And you can see we got that old neck flap hanging on there. And I don't want you to cut it back up here to where we're exposing too much of that good breast meat. I just want you to cut it to where it ain't hanging down in the way. So about that much. But folks, this is a little trick I learned from when we did the turkey in the ground in the Dutch oven. You, you didn't see that? Oh my gosh. It was like we was up on a ranch and I dug a hole with the post hole diggers. Fixed that turkey all up, put him in that Dutch oven, covered him up with coals and then covered him up with dirt. Okay, I just want you to take that. I don't want you to puncture that skin anywhere, but I want you to loosen it because we got to get some good stuff up in there. And what is that? Some Kerrygold butter and what? Red River Ranch Smoky Dip. If y'all ain't tried this stuff, folks, you need to because it is bad habit forming, but it's just more than a dip. Hey, you just pour that right in there on top of that butter, and then I just want you to go to mashing that softened stick of Kerrygold butter till we can get it all incorporated. But I got you a substitute in the recipe that you can mix up for that. And this is a flavor blend of peppers and dried onion and garlic. Mm. I want you to get a little bit of that. I just want you to take it place it up under there get it off that spoon and then just rub it back up in there somewhere because this is all going to melt and get somewhere it is i got about a spoonful left here make sure i get it all and folks i'm just going to put it down there in the cavity of that turkey and stuff it as far as i can get it but i'm going to add a little more flavor this year because i'm feeling festive i am we're just going to throw some apple up in there so, we are full of apple. We are. Well, welcome to I Wanna Feel Good Turkey Time. Cause what are we gonna do? A little avocado oil, or you can use olive oil. But this too is sort of like a binding agent for that seasoning to stick to. Got a lot of intense help going on here. <laughs> Zoe says, I love Thanksgiving some of that Red River Ranch original seasoning. Now remember, this is a big bird, so it's gonna take more than you think it is. And just go to sprinkling, and then we'll go to rubbing here in a minute. Well, good thing I like about the pit barrel folks is they send you a turkey hanger. Now, you could put that in a pan just like that, lay it on top the smoker, and just let it smoke. But folks, that pit barrel, member, spiral smoking action, heat and everything, it is so good. And just run him up in here from this end. And then it's going to poke out here on the other end. Make sure that you pretty well yeah. stayed center in here. And this is going to run right through here like this. And guess what? We have a turkey hanger. And we started out with some good fogo in there, which is a mixture of hickory oak and a little bit of fruit wood. But then we're going to add some alder and a little bit of mesquite. And I got them soaking. But first, we got to get these rods through there. So... Usually you got to do it this way to where you can get the turkey down in there and then slip this one over there to it. Now I got some dry alder and some dry mesquite, but we have soaked some also because I want to get some smoking action right off the bat. So that's why I had some that was wet, some that wasn't. 
on the lid goes if you got you a temperature gauge folks we want to try to run about 260 265 long in there we'll come back and check that temperature about every hour see how our coals are doing add some more stuff to get that smoke flavor but we are well on our way i'll be seeing you in a little bit I think I need to tell y'all, about every hour in there, I went back out here and I'd add a little more smoke if it needed it. And that's why you gotta have that ample supply of your alder wood and your mesquite chunks soaked in that water. Drop them down in there, check the temperature about every hour and a half, because we want to get to about 150 and then pull that bird because he's gonna rise up about 10 to 12 degrees as he sits there and cools off. But folks, do not tempt this bird with foil because when you just cover him up with full, you're going against what we're trying to create, and that is crispy skin, because that steam in there is just gonna soften it up. And when you're probing, it's best that you go in there at the meaty part of that thigh, right in there, and check that temperature. And when you go to cut a turkey, I want you to cut him along this breastbone, and then lay him out there and cut across the grain. That way he's gonna be the most tender. When we get ready to slice that in a minute, and folks, I wanted that skin to get so good and crispy, and that's what happened. And if you can't get that achieved right there at the last, just crack the lid on your smoker and let that last 30 minutes just crisp it right up. I, I got to take care of my help. They really love Thanksgiving, and me and Shan is thankful to have them. So there you go, a little duker. Happy Thanksgiving, and to you too, B. I'm glad y'all like turkey. I am. Say folks, this is easy, and I want to tell you this. Now, a brined bird will cook quicker than one that is not brined. We went about four and a half hours, and this bird was right on the money there, about 160, 165, when we got plumbed through with him. But remember, don't tint him. You're going to ruin that good crispy skin. And let him set about 40 minutes, and then let's cut that bird up, and let's gather him around the table. Let's bless it and let's be glad we got it because mm, that is some fine dining right there. The thing I love about a smoked turkey, especially with that alder wood, is the great flavor it brings to it. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Let me get my wings ready. Hang on. We finna do the turkey trot. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Make you wanna wobble. Get down and get your turkey. Would it be in the plate or on the bottle? Whoop. <laughs> yep, it come out, it did. We just wanna wish you all a very, very, very happy Thanksgiving. We're so blessed, folks, we are. And remember, when you gather around that table, that really it is not the legs of the table that hold it up. It is a family gathered around there that you're holding hands with. As always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying across this great country. And for those of you that might be away from your family members, stationed somewhere on the road, and you're not going to be able to be there for Thanksgiving, hey, we just reach out to you, and we're going to hug you, and they're going to love you, and it's going to be a great day it is, because, hey, Thanksgiving comes every day that you're on the right side of the grass, it does. Hope y'all enjoy it. Hobble your gobble and get him to the table, and let's do the wobble, because, mm, what are we talking about? Happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you down the smoke turkey trail. Nope, I don't need y'all's help. Mm -mm -mm. What's better than that? Uh, I have messed that up. Excuse me. Already. <clears throat> Things good and flavorful. So what are we using? I don't know. I can't get any. My hands is wet. Skin on this turkey. It'd be embarrassing. <laughs>